Hi everyone, in this tutorial I want to show you how to apply the horsehair braid to the bottom hem of maybe a dress or jacket or whatever you want to do it to. Here's an example of a wedding dress and we added this to the bottom and you can see it gives it a nice clean finish. You don't see any stitching. We hand stitched the bottom here. So I'm going to go ahead and discuss also, here thank you Ashley. I'm going to discuss the different types of horsehair braid. So here I have a really soft one. It's about, I think this is a three to four inch one. Yeah, three inch one. And you can see it's really soft and flexible. The one we just showed you on the dress was this one. This is a medium horsehair braid. So it's, it's still flexible, but it's not quite as like soft. So you have to de choose depending on your fabric that you're going to be using. This one also has what's called a drawstring at the bottom. So you can pull it and make it go around circles or curves. So I'm just gonna pull that out a little bit, you can see. So if I needed to shape the bottom of my jacket, for example, and I wanna put this in the hemline, this is a great way to do that. Or if you have some flounces that you wanna add extra um, curvature to, you can do a lot of things like that. This comes in all kinds of um, colors and widths. So you, you're not really limited to the white. And I'm gonna show you one more. This is a one inch, but really stiff. So you see there's not as much flexibility here. So if you really wanted to control something or have a flounce that doesn't like have a lot of softness, you would go with this one. And again, these all come in soft, medium, and stiff in all different widths. So today I'm gonna to show you how to actually apply it onto silk charmeuse. Okay, so now a few things to note before adding the horsehair braid to your fabric. I'm gonna to talk to you about silk charmeuse. Um, that's the fabric I have here. It's very slinky and soft, so we want to make sure we also do not stretch it when we're sewing this on. And you're just going to use your regular foot here. I just have my regular two-toe foot. Make sure you choose the right kind of thread for your application. This is the, so this is the right side of my silk, which is the wrong side. The horsehair braid doesn't have a right or wrong. And I'm just going to lay the edge of my horsehair braid and line it up with the edge of my dress, the hem of my dress. You're gonna take the right side of your garment and you're gonna take the horsehair braid and you're gonna line the edges up together. There is no right or wrong to the horsehair braid. And I'm gonna put it under my foot. I don't pin this ahead of time, but you can go ahead and do that if you think you need to. You just don't stretch it and you'll be fine. I'm gonna, now I'm gonna line this up with the edge of my foot to the edge of the raw edges here of the horsehair braid and the silk. Now I'm gonna not stretch it, then I'm gonna show you what happens when you stretch it. You just wanna keep making sure those two edges are aligned. There might be a reason you wanna stretch it. What I wanna point out is I am sewing straight and you'll see here that it feels like I'm going a little crooked in spots, that's because the needle is penetrating into this little grooves of this plastic. So don't worry about it, it won't look crooked at the end. It just feels like it will, but it won't. It's sometimes it's lining up in the holes and sometimes it's just jumping to the next hole. I also recommend when you are finished with this horsehair braid on your project to change your needle because again, as it's penetrating this plastic, it could be adding some burrs to your needle. Just gonna go halfway here. Okay, so if you do stretch it, I just wanna show you what'll happen. It won't, it won't necessarily be pretty unless you're doing it on purpose. So let's say I'm stretching. You see how skinny I can get this horsehair braid? And you won't, if you're not doing it on purpose, at the end, it's gonna pull all your fabric in here, okay? So then when you wanna hem it, you're gonna have way too much excess. Again, if you're doing it just because of aesthetic and there's something you're gonna be, some effect you're gonna want, then that's fine. So I'm gonna just end it here, as far as the step one. Okay, so now I'm gonna, I'm not gonna do this part that I stretched. So the next step would be to fold it back. Oh, let me cut this off. And you should go to the iron. I'm just gonna use my hands to show you, but you definitely wanna to go to the iron and make that nice and flat. And what I'm doing is making sure that the horsehair, that this is the edge of the horsehair, so the horsehair is in there. If I don't, it might just start doing that and it's not gonna be even. So just make sure that goes in there and then put some pins at the top edge of the horsehair braid. Top 
to hold it before you go to the iron and press it. See how, see how it's like wanting to roll? So I'm just forcing it. So again, you're gonna to go to the iron, you're gonna make that nice and flat, and then you're going to decide how to hem this. You can do this on the machine. The home sewing machines have a blind hem, which we did do another video on how to do that, or we can do this by hand. I'm gonna to go to another piece that I have ready to go that's already been pressed. I'm just pull this one out of the picture. So this is silk organza, and you can see the horsehair braid through there a little bit. This one's already been pressed, so I wanna show you the next step on how to hem it. I'm going to use red thread so you can see it. Um, where's the white? Maybe the white is better. So I'm going to use a stitch method called the flat catch stitch. I'm just going to put the thread in my needle. I'm going to double it so that you can see it better in the video, but you really want to just use one fine layer of thread. I would even do like a silk thread. So I'm going to, so I'm right-handed. I'm going to be working from the top down. If you're left-handed, you're probably going to want to work the other direction. So the first thing you want to do is anchor your thread. I'm going to do that a couple times. Okay. And I'm going to do the flat catch stitch. So I'm bringing the thread to my right at an angle. I'm going to put it now horizontal with the hemline and just try to catch one thread. You're gonna see this clearly because it's white thread on black. Now I'm keeping the thread over my needle. The first one is a little fiddly. You'll see the next one will be easier. Okay, and now I'm gonna come back over and you see that little crisscross? That's what you want because you want this stitch to remain flexible. And I'm gonna go down to the bottom. And now I'm gonna go vertically. I'm gonna take one thread and I'm gonna go into my horsehair braid, just a tiny bit in. Oh, that's the other thread, okay. And we're gonna do the same step. So I'm gonna hold it now with my thumb. The very beginning is where it usually gives you a little bit of trouble because it wants to move. And I'm going up about a quarter of an inch from my edge, keeping the thread over the needle and then pulling the needle back towards me, keeping my thread there. And then catching, see the thread is always over the needle, which is allowing it to do those little crisscrosses. I'm gonna do one more. Thread to the right, catch one thread. And you can see how flexible the stitch is, even as I'm working with it, I can move it. You wanna do that so that when you're walking, moving, it does, the stitches don't pop. And then one more time. Okay, so that's what you wanna to start to create these little triangles, little crisscrossy triangles. Now on this side, you're definitely gonna be seeing the stitch because again, I'm using white thread, but if you did it with the matching thread, you wouldn't barely see it. This is organza. If we do it on the silk charmeuse, you wouldn't see it at all. Okay, so that is how you do your horsehair braid fine edge finish.